basically, uh, I don't want to just keep talking about what the experience of having mental health issues is like. This whole thing. I, would, I want you guys to know that I'm out here. The proverbial here. I think I'm using that word right. Thinking and researching and trying to solve the things that I experience for everyone, for all of us. So even if I skip a week or I don't have an episode up, it's because I'm contemplating how I can do this podcast better or use this better or make it more useful. And also, uh, just because I haven't done an episode doesn't mean I'm not (sighs) fucking ferociously ingesting information and critically analyzing every single thing I come across and experience for the good of us all. Uh, But I do want to tell you some important things that happened. So since last week's episode, it's been pretty tough. I've had some days where I've been like, damn, I feel like I'm reverting, like I'm getting worse. I'm going backwards. And it's kind of scary and annoying and not fun. But then two things happened. One, one, I stumbled upon this, ep- this uh, episode of Tetragrammaton, which is Rick Rubin's podcast that I'm pretty sure he doesn't promote at all because his YouTube channel has like roughly about as many views as this one. <laughs> it doesn't make any fucking sense. I mean, probably a little bit more, but it doesn't matter. He's Rick Rubin. He should have whatever. But it's my favorite podcast of all time. It's unbelievable. I love it. Highly recommend it, but particularly two episodes. One, uh, it's a two-part episode. It's like six hours total, so three hours each episode. It's pretty dense, but Andrew Huberman and Jack Cruz are the guests, Dr. Jack Cruz. Um, I was already a big fan of Andrew Huberman. Didn't know who Jack Cruz was, but I heard his name somewhere. Anyway, it's a crazy podcast. Jack Cruz, this guy's talking about how, essentially, I'm going to boil it down and probably like misleadingly, but his... His whole, he, he's a neurosurgeon, hyper intelligent, educated guy. His whole theory is I mean, I think he would say it's scientific fact at this point is that light is the primary factor in our overall health, not diet, not exercise, not whatever. It's light. Light is the, the first line of whatever that affects everything else. And he says that we make light in our atoms, I think. And he says that we're semiconductors, we're human semiconductors. Anyway, it sounds woo-woo and kind of out there and crazy, but if you listen. Plus, Andrew Huberman's sitting there, and Andrew Huberman is like a by-the-book scientist. And he not only doesn't push back on almost any of it, but he starts to correct his own findings. Because this guy, Jack Cruz, goes after Andrew Huberman and is like, you've been saying this shit. You've been saying that blue light's not bad, that that's bullshit. You've been saying contacts are okay. And Andrew Huberman changes his stance on all of it live on the podcast in real time based on what this guy's saying. So it's super fascinating. I don't know why this episode's not way bigger because basically what this guy is saying would change the entire paradigm of health in science. Highly recommend it if you have the attention span and capacity to sit and hear 90% words that you don't understand scientifically. Um, Sorry, scientific words that you don't understand. But whatever. It really actually, like, it it, it was very hopeful, but also threw me for a loop because I'm like, dude, does, does literally no one know anything? It made me, I'm in this phase where I kind of don't believe anything. But I'm starting to believe some new things, so that's good. More on that later. The other thing I did was I quit drinking coffee four days ago, which you don't know me personally, but that's a huge, crazy thing. I've quit coffee for a year once in my life. Ever since I started drinking it when I was 16, I've been super addicted. Not in the way that I consume a crazy amount. I have consumed crazy amounts daily at points in my life, but my relationship with it is that I... It's not like I don't see the point in doing anything when I don't have coffee, but it's 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 like a straight up stereotypical drug addict's relationship with a drug. I It's like I like drinking coffee and being on coffee more than I like doing anything else in life, and I'm not kidding. And it just I woke up one morning, was sick of being super depressed, 
was about to drink my coffee, was being very cynical about it. Like, I, I know it's going to make me feel good for 30 minutes, but like after that, what? Back to depression? And I stumbled upon these two clips on YouTube of Jordan Peterson and John Mayer, separate clips, although I'd love to see them have a conversation. And Jordan Peterson's talking about porn and masturbation, and if you're embarrassed of it, either don't be embarrassed or stop doing it, and stop doing it is probably the right answer. And then something about, I don't know, anyway, he was kind of just calling me out about like how I was, it felt like he was calling me out about like, dude, if you think, if you think your relationship with coffee is unhealthy and bad, even though you don't consume crazy amounts, quit. And then John Mayer was talking about when he quit drinking alcohol, and he was like, I woke up after six days of a hangover. He basically, the last time he ever drank was at Drake's 30th birthday party, and apparently he made a huge ass of himself and had a six-day hangover where he woke up every morning and was like, oh, what did I do? Thinking about what he did. I mean, I'm sure a lot of us can relate to that. You drink a lot. You do embarrassing shit. The first thing you think when you wake up in the morning is like like sheer miserable embarrassment, anxiety. So he went through that and then he said, and basically I asked myself how much potential, how much of my potential do do I want to access? And he said, a hundred percent. And the only way to do that is stop drinking. And that at first it's like a low level of boring, but then you can bring the whole line up if you work hard and stick with it. And I had seen that episode before many times actually, or that clip of him saying that. And I already don't drink, but it also felt like, like, why did I just stumble upon those two clips? And I just all of a sudden got this It wasn't like an overwhelming sensation or emotional thing. I was just like, I'm done. I'm done with coffee, which is, I'm telling you, it's insane. It sounds like nothing because it's coffee and everyone drinks coffee and it's not a big deal. But for me, it's a huge deal. And I was just like, I'm over it. So I had a few sips to try and like not have a crazy headache. And then I dumped the rest out and I didn't drink coffee that day. The next day, I didn't drink coffee either. Well, I had a sip because I started getting the withdrawal headache. So I had one sip, headache went away, dumped it out. Next day, no coffee, no headache. Today's fourth day, no coffee, no headache. Here's the craziest fucking part. It's not like my anxiety or my depression is completely gone. But most of the last four days, it's been like fucking 80% plus gone. It's weird. I feel a distinct lack of motivation It's not like I don't have energy. I just don't. I think that I connected my creative drive and work ethic so tightly to the caffeine high that now, like when I don't drink caffeine, I think about like doing creative stuff, like making music or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't care. And it's not like a sad, empty, like the life's not worth living. It's just like, it's more like, I don't care. I want to go sit in the sun. It's this, I don't know how to describe it other than that. Anytime I think about things that take work ethic and focus and ambition, it's just like, "Ah, I'd just rather go sit in the sun. Whereas like, that's a depression I welcome. The depression before was like, life is meaningless. I don't feel like doing anything. I'm just going to be scared all the time and sad and like everything's painful. And that's awful. This is like, I don't know, it's weird. And, you know, it's only four days in, so whatever. But, like, that's even just four days of, like, all I did was quit coffee. And I don't feel like I've been on a high. Like, because there could be the novelty of, like, oh, I quit something that had a hold on me. And now I feel free and I'm high off it. I don't think it's that. Because I don't, I mean, that it's cool. I'm happy about it. But I'm not, like thrilled and like let's get it because i've been here before it just feels different i don't think that it like it's i mean it's possible but i'm not saying that it's like cured my depression but it's possible that quitting coffee that or that coffee was exacerbating my symptoms a lot and this is the kind of shit that doctors won't fucking tell you because there's no research on it And not that there needs to be, and I'm not saying coffee's like fucking everyone up, but you have to advocate for yourself. You have to critically look at your life. And despite the social norms, despite um, preconceived notions about health or the way that anything affects you, because everybody says coffee's great for you. And I'm not even sleeping better. It's not even, that's what people say. Quit coffee if your sleep sucks. Because, and I don't even believe that. I don't even think that coffee maybe really fucks with your sleep unless it's giving you anxiety and that's keeping you up. But 
It's not like I've been sleeping better the last few days. I slept, I had nights like this. I've been sleeping decently. But the second night of quitting coffee, I slept terribly. It's just you have to try things. And it's so hard. It's so hard. It's surprisingly hard to look at something like coffee because it seems so innocuous and go like, maybe that's it. But another thing that like I'll venture out to say is I kind of like, I don't know, it feels a little bit like <laughs> mystical, divine intervention, something. I don't know how all of a sudden I quit coffee. It wasn't a big deal. That decision, I've done it in the past, but it's been so hard and it's taken like really serious things to make me quit and take a look at and this time it was just casual which is that's the craziest part I just casually was like "Ah, I'm done I didn't have to sit and contemplate and like convince myself and write it down and I was just like "I'm, I'm sick of this what if it's not helping me and all of a sudden I just feel better I don't know you guys shit's crazy so I'll continue to update you. I've still been meditating every day. We'll see, you know, I'm, it's like day fucking, it's like two weeks in or something like that. I don't know. Um, quitting coffee hasn't helped my meditation. Uh, I still feel lazy throughout the day, but I'll take this over. I'll take blah over <gasps> scared, and, you know, any day. So... Um, I also want to go back to the drawing board and figure out like what the fuck I'm doing with this podcast and like how I can help and just like, I don't know. Also, there may not be an episode next week or the week after because I have shows coming up. There may be like a two to three week gap. Um, I still may have time to do the episodes, but just a heads up. Uh, I'm not losing interest or motivation. I just, and, and I may... Honestly, even if I have time, take another week or two off because I need time to fucking, I've been so busy. I haven't had time to even think and take a look at this and everything and what I want to do with my life. So I hope everybody's doing good. Obviously, I always hope that. Why would I hope everybody's doing bad? <laughs> I hope everybody's doing great, man. Um... Also, since quitting coffee, I've had these moments where I'm sitting outside looking at the sky and the trees and the sun, and I've been here before. I remember quitting coffee before and having this feeling, and all of a sudden, I'm like, I want to live on a farm, and like, but I mean it. Like, I just am enjoying the nature and everything in a way that I didn't before, because it's like, if I wasn't looking forward to a cup of coffee then like nothing mattered because I was always just like, when's my next cup of coffee? When's my-? I'm not kidding. This sounds insane, but I literally was like, when's my next cup of coffee? That was my whole focus. I couldn't wait to wake up in the morning to have coffee. I couldn't wait for the night to be over, the day to be over once in the afternoon, once it was beyond my coffee hours, I couldn't wait for the next day. That's not good, man. There's got to be better shit than that in life. So right now, I think I'm at this level where like, I'm not experiencing no joy but like i'm gonna have to work it's gonna be a while before my brain recalibrates and i start enjoying normal things a lot um i'll probably gain some weight i've been gaining weight but i'll probably gain some weight because like once you quit something you need something else to fill up that whatever and coffee was an appetite suppressant so i'll probably eat more um but also i'll probably exercise more because i was really just like yesterday like nothing sounds fun or good it's like, well, I guess if I want to feel good, I got to go exercise. And I remember I used to do that because I used to run eight miles a day. I got addicted to that in place of caffeine. I don't know. We'll see what the future holds. But dude, if you have vices, even if they don't seem like vices, cut everything out. Anything that could be peaking your, let's call it dopamine, one of those things. Your pleasure centers like really high and too easily without hard work. Like exercise, fine. Go exercise hard if you need to feel joy. But like porn, caffeine, sugar, alcohol, any drugs, if you are struggling with mental health, cut it all out. Unless, you know, there's like a, unless it's like a health safety issue where you need to be in a clinic to to get off of whatever you're going to stop. That's a different story. But I'm talking about these like lower level kind of addiction things. See what it does. Don't 
Yeah, you got to just be like, you got to be like ignorant. You got to go back to a place of ignorance where you don't have any like limiting beliefs about things. We're just like, let's try it. It might work instead of like, that's not going to do it. Because that's how I felt. I was like, quitting coffee is not going to do anything. But maybe it did. I don't want to celebrate too early, but I'm en- I've enjoyed the last few days and I'm grateful for them. And I'm also just happy to like be trying to get that satisfaction from other things other than like a drug that doesn't last. And then I have a crash. Um, I don't like the fact that like my whole life was literally about when can I be caffeinated next? That's crazy. I don't like that. I want something else. All right, that's it. That's it for this week. Bye-bye.